Frederick has a neurological condition called Guillain-Barre syndrome. It's a very rare disease affecting about 20,000 people every year. So let's head on over to Jason. He's with a specialist now who can tell us a little bit more about this condition. Jason? Yeah, Alicia, we are with uh, Dr. Kevin Connor today. He's a neurologist at Texas Health Arlington Memorial. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Guillain-Barre here because a lot of people have never even heard of this, uh, but this is a really serious condition. This can be an, an awful condition. I mean, it does have a mortality rate that's fairly high. Mm -hmm. um, it causes paralysis to the point where you have to have a machine to help you breathe or even a, a tube put in you to allow you to eat. Mm. So there are degrees of, of how bad this can get. Uh, we did notice that he posted that he caught that they caught this early in his case. And I'm curious how big of a deal is that if this is caught early and you have some intervention that happens? It's huge. I mean, the, the sooner you can kind of smolder the immune system, the, mm. the better success you have in treatment, it shortens the duration, mm -hmm. improves the recovery. Now, he talked a lot about weakness, uh, uh, about how he was experiencing weakness. That, I suppose, is uh, one of the hallmark symptoms of this. It is the kind of the hallmark that makes you think about this disease is, is the weakness. And typically, we talk about an ascending paralysis typically mm -hmm. begins in the feet, marches its way up. It can go all the way up into, into the, the eyes as well as the swallowing mechanism as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so here are some of the symptoms laid out here. Prickling pins and needles sensation in the limbs, weakness in your legs, unsteady, un, unsteady walking or inability to walk, severe pain that may feel achy and difficulty breathing. Uh, now, these sound like uh, they could be associated with a lot of things though and I suppose that that probably keeps a lot of people from being diagnosed. It does and, and uh, this is not one of the more typical of the symptom or one of the diseases of those symptoms mm -hmm. and so when you see these kinds of things you think about a disc in the neck which apparently he was looked for and, and uh, multiple sclerosis and other things can present in a real similar type of fashion. And do you usually see an increase in those symptoms pretty quickly? Does it progress pretty quickly? Typically, it progresses fairly rapidly. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, one day you could be tingles and the next day on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. That's unusual, but that's how rapid this disease can sometimes be. Wow, that's gotta be frightening. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about this here. He has been very optimistic. The team has been very optimistic. He is insistent that he's going to get back out there and play, that medical profession professionals are telling him that. Does that sound like a likelihood when you have a job that's that intense physically and mentally for that matter mm -hmm. uh, with this condition? It, the odds are good. Mm -hmm. And so the 80% of folks recover completely 100 percent some six months some a year sometimes faster than that i mean this guy is an elite athlete and with a great work ethic and i be curious to see how he how he progresses well doctor thanks for being with us today and of course we certainly uh, wish him the best as he um, makes his road to recovery now and thankfully they did catch this early thank you <laughs> thank you for being with us alicia